I also have with me Karsten and Marino. Uh, they're going to be answering questions. So if you have any questions, please do type those in and Karsten or Marino will answer those for you. So first a level set on why we build tools such as Curio Operator and what our goals are. So collaboration is about getting people together and having them be able to communicate effectively to get things done. This can be done on the phone, through email, through instant messaging, etc. But in the end, it's the people that are the reason that we need collaboration tools. So people really need to be the focus of whatever collaboration tools and solutions that you choose. Whether you want to send a message, make a phone call, or however you want to communicate, the solutions that you use should make it easier in as many ways as possible for people to get together and collaborate. Let's go into a review of what Operator does before going into what's new in the 2.4 version. So Operator is a voice over IP phone solution. It allows small and medium sized businesses to communicate internally and externally with enterprise like features a lot less expensively than with a traditional phone system. It's also a lot simpler to set up. Everything internally goes over the LAN and everything externally can take the most optimal route to ensure that the costs are as low as possible. Operator provides, provides enterprise class features that users need and they love to use. It's very secure and offers flexible deployment options, a hardware appliance, a software appliance on VMware or an installable image. So this is a list of the things that we've added in the 2.4 version. I'm going to go over them briefly here and then I'll go into a little more detail on some of the highlights in the following slides. So we've added the ability to make video calls and we've included a lot of new phones that will auto provision, including three new video phones that I will show you. Uh, and I'll go through everything in a little more detail in a moment. We've added the ability to prepend a label to an incoming call ID. This is particularly useful if you have a contact center agent that's answering the phone for more than one business, that you can prepend something to the caller ID so that they can see which business the incoming call is for, and then the agent can answer appropriately. I'll just wait for that to come back up. So in the past, we've been able to have call routes selected by having the end user dial a prefix to ensure that the call goes by the optimal route. So this is something that the administrator can now configure so that the end user doesn't have to dial those prefixes. And that essentially makes it easier for the end user to dial a call. They don't have to dial those prefixes anymore. For the business owner, we can interoperate with more telephony providers than ever before by supporting more SIP headers. Uh, we can also, uh, we allow you to match the DTMF method for your SIP provider. And this means that you get the best DTMF support and sensitivity of certain settings for your users rather than the defaults that we've had before. So administrators have had great control over features of the phones that they have. So, for example, customers told us that they pick phones for their features but want the ability to limit some features. So, take, for example, a phone that is great for everything you need except that it has a very complex user experience. The administrator can configure it so that, for example, they could just get one call at a time so that they just use the simpler features of the phone. So, more granular configuration of features for certain settings on the phones. Uh, call forwarding is something else that we've done something with here. So we've set it up so um, you can have it that it doesn't apply if it's a contact center agent with call queues. They can make sure that calls get routed correctly, but not if it's a contact center uh, incoming call for a call queue.
So you can't be having a face-to-face -face conversation, but to save time and costs on travel, if you can do a video call instead of an audio-only call, you can have a much better discussion. Seeing facial expressions and body language with video greatly increases the communications experience. So Operator now supports video with standards-based video codecs. The quality of the video call will depend on various things. Um, it will depend on the phone you're using and the quality of the camera that you're using. But it's also important that the person on the other side is using a similar quality um, camera as well. It's important that you have enough bandwidth to be able to send the correct type of video call. Uh, so it will depend on the network that you have. But if you do have everything nicely aligned, you have a, at least a VGA camera and the person on the other side has a VGA camera, you can get a, a good quality video call that, that really will enhance that collaboration communication experience. The phones that I'm showing here are the three that we auto provision. So this is the Grandstream GXV3275. It's a HD video phone up to 720p with 30 frames per second. Also we have the Yale Link here which we can auto provision and that does 720 by 480 video also at 30 frames per second and that's the Polycom phone on the right hand side. So all these will auto provision with the operator. So in addition to auto provisioning the Grandstream, the Yale Link and the Polycom video phones, we also have a lot of new auto provisioning phones that can be used with operator 2.4. So we've added some models from SNOM, uh, the 725, M300, and the M700 multi-cell base station, which is the one in the lower left there. We've added some Mitel phones as well, more Yale Link phones, including uh, the conference phone, which is the one on the right-hand side of the Yale Link. More Grandstream phones as well, that are audio only, and the Polycom VVX as well. So automatic provisioning essentially simplifies phone setup by assigning configuration to the phone when it's plugged into the network, which makes it easier for end users to use any of the phones that you can see here. To integrate Curio Operator Web Client into your line of business applications, you can now brand it so that it has your company logo on it. Um, if you do this, it can feel a lot more like the other line of business applications that you have. You can also incorporate some text. So the standard operator screen has a box to enter the username and password. Uh, you could put some text on there to guide the user to, well, which username and password do I enter? We all have a lot of them. If you can say, well, these are your corporate credentials, these are your telephony credentials. However, however it's best for you to say that, you can add some text so that it becomes um, an easier to use experience based on the criteria that you have in your own company. As well as being able to brand Curio Operator with that company logo, you can furthermore make it blend in with your other line of business applications by changing the colour scheme. So here at Curio we like orange, but for your company perhaps you like green or perhaps a more neutral theme. So you can select a colour so that Operator matches the other line of business applications that you have. With this new release of Operator, users can upload their greetings as WAV files. So when you're not there to answer the call, these are the greetings that your callers will hear. This is a nice way of adding the greetings and it's a lot easier than dialing um, with the telephony TUI where you press buttons to record your greeting. So you can record it using your favourite tool at leisure into a WAV file and then upload it later into Operator. So you can record your greeting, busy message, unavailable message, and upload them all from the operator web clients. So we've made some changes to our call forwarding setup. This, this screen gives you the ability to be very granular about how you want the operator to behave if you don't answer a call in a reasonable amount of time. And you can even define the term reasonable amount of time here too. So you can see that we've added some icons here to make the 
make the box look a, a little bit more modern uh, and pull out into three sections the things you, you can do with call forwarding. So when a call comes in, you can define how long it should ring before some action is taken. That's on the top part of this box. Let's say that we decide that 20 seconds is a reasonable amount of time. After 20 seconds, I'd like operator to try and locate me on one of the numbers that I've added into the second section here. And then after another period of time, which I can define again, so I can say try and find me for another 15 seconds, then I want it to go to voicemail. So for myself, if I'm at my desk, I want my phone to ring, but I only want it to ring for 15 seconds. If I don't answer the call after 15 seconds, I'm probably going to, it's probably going to try and find me for another 20 seconds on my cell phone. And if I still don't answer, then let's, let's stop making the call or wait around and send them to voicemail. So operator 2.4 changes the way you'd set up a few things, such as hiding and overriding of phone numbers. You used to configure these options under extensions, but we've moved some of these settings so that they're now under call routing. And this seems to make sense with the configuration tabs that we have here. So for example, um, being able to hide a user's phone number. You'd use this in the case that your CEO or managing director wants to ensure that when someone gets in touch with him, they have to call his administrative assistant to do that, and she decides whether to put the call through to him or not. However, our CEO managing director, he does want to be able to dial anybody in his management team directly if he needs a fast answer to questions. So to achieve this for his particular extension, you would go to the call routing configuration, select his extension and select to hide the caller ID. And we've added the ability to put some context onto an incoming call. So you can prepend a label to the incoming caller ID. So imagine here a small call center that handles more than one type of business. Let's take a small example of a business who are set up as a support center. They handle support for accountancy services and they also handle support for insurance services as well. When our contact center agent gets an incoming call, this feature allows him to look at his phone and see something like accounts appended to the phone number that comes in. Or it could say insurance appended to the phone number that comes in. Then when the agent answers the call, they can say something like, um, hello, ABC Accounting, how can I help you? Or hello, ABC Insurance, how can I help you? So we've added support for more SIP headers in Operator 2.4. This allows Operator to de be deployed in even more environments than we could before. It will work with uh, more telephony providers because we have different SIP headers that are required by those. So different tele telephony providers have different header requirements. Um, so for example, we now support all the ones that you can see here preferred identity, asserted identity, remote party ID. So with being able to support these, it opens it up that we can um, work with more telephony providers than we ever could before. There's also a setting here that is called the diversion header. And this can be used if you send the diversion header along with the call. It means that if possible, we can show the original calling number when transferring a call. So if, for example, a call comes in for me and I want to transfer it over to Marino, then if we use the diversion header, when that call finally gets forward, the person receiving the call will see that it came from Marino rather than myself. So some SIP providers work a little differently than others, and we've added the ability to fine tune some of those things. So I'm showing here how to ad adjust the DTMF method. Uh, this means what happens when key presses happen on the phone. 
So by default, operator supports the DTMF method RFC 2833 in band, but some providers will work a lot better if you match the DTMF method to the one that they specifically require, such as SIP info or in band. And other settings that we've changed of this nature are the ability to adjust audio gain control for telephony devices. So those are the highlights of Operator 2.4. I hope you'll download it, use it. I hope you'll enjoy some of these new features.